CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray rover, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray rover, Echo Nancy 2030, Gridline QOZ. Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X. Welcome to the third video in this series for DX Engineering on getting started in the amateur radio satellites. In this video, I'll be helping you make the leap to linear satellites. This is the first of a two-part intro to the linear birds. We'll go over the advantages of the linear satellites, equipment needed from a portable operator's perspective, and how to properly tune in a linear satellite and find yourself on the downlink. I'll be building on concepts I touched on in the first two videos, so be sure to review those here on the DX Engineering feed if you need a refresher. The linear birds have a lot of advantages over the FM satellites. The main advantage is that more than one person can use them simultaneously. As I mentioned in the first video in this series, the FM satellites are like an orbiting repeater, meaning only one person can use it at a time. The linear satellites have a transponder, which provides anywhere from 20 to 60 kHz of bandwidth to tune across, just like you tune across an HF band. This allows multiple users to make contacts through the satellite at the same time. Another advantage is that it provides you with more opportunities to be on the air. There are far more linear satellites in orbit right now than FM satellites. By getting on the linear birds, you're simply giving yourself more opportunities to make contacts. And lastly, the linear satellites tend to have larger footprints than their FM counterparts. This means it's possible to make contacts over greater distances. This comes in very handy if you enjoy working DX stations, or you're trying to make contact with as many different grid squares as you possibly can. As an example, record distance contacts on the FM satellites are around 5 to 6,000 kilometers, whereas record distances on the linear satellites are well over 8,000 kilometers. As I mentioned earlier, we're still focusing on equipment needed for portable operations, building on the gear used for FM operating that we covered in a previous video. We'll go over operating the satellites from your home station in an upcoming video. As you would expect, a lot of the gear used for your FM satellite station can be used for your linear station as well, such as the handheld Yagi, the boom mic headset, and the digital recorder to record the satellite passes as they're occurring but you'll need two radios that transmit and receive on sideband on VHF and UHF in order to access the linear birds. Here's an example of a common portable linear satellite station that fits into a camera bag. I learned about this configuration from Paul Stetzer, N8HM, who is the executive vice president of AMSAT, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation of America, and a very active satellite operator. This configuration is quite common among portable satellite operators. This is just one example of a portable linear capable satellite station. There are plenty of radio combinations that can do this, including some software defined radio options if you're interested in that aspect of the hobby. So be sure to use your imagination and experiment. This station is built around two Yaesu FT817 transceivers. Many stations now use the newer Yaesu 818 as well. One radio is used for transmit, the other is used for receive. A boom mic headset adapter plugs into the side of the transmit radio and is fed through the wall of the bag, while a multi-input headphone adapter is plugged into the receive radio's headphone jack. From there, the operator's headphones and a line out to a digital recorder can be connected. Antenna cables are routed to the front antenna port of the 817s. A diplexer is in line to help prevent the transmitted signal from overloading the receive radio's front end. This phenomenon is known as desense. A diplexer helps isolate the receive radio from the nearby transmitter and is quite effective in eliminating desense. Without it, the transmitter can overload the receive radio when you are transmitting, which prevents you from hearing anything at all. Power is provided to the radios by a 9 amp hour LIFEPO battery. A shoulder harness replaces the single shoulder carrying strap so the bag can sit comfortably on the operator's chest with full access to both radios. So how do you key the transmitter? 
Some have a push to talk button in one hand, while others use Vox operation. I prefer to use Vox operation, but you should experiment and discover what works best for you. Being able to hear yourself on a linear satellite requires you understand how the satellite's transponder works. You'll see that most linear satellites have an inverting transponder. This means that the transmit and receive satellite passbands are inversely related. Say you're trying to operate on the XW2F satellite. The lower portion of the satellite's uplink will correspond to the upper limit of the satellite's downlink. In other words, if you were to transmit as you tuned from the bottom to the top of the uplink, your transmitted signal would be received from the top of the passband down to the bottom. Here's a chart to show the relationship between XW2F's frequencies on its transponder. All linear satellites will have a similar relationship between transmit and receive frequencies. KE0PBR has created a series of cheat sheets for all of the amateur satellites showing the relationship between uplink and downlink frequencies, factoring in the Doppler effect. I use them all the time when I'm operating a linear pass and they're really helpful. You can download them for free at ke0pbr.wordpress.com. As we mentioned in the last video, the Doppler effect has to be taken into consideration during the satellite pass. While FM satellites require an occasional twist of the 70 centimeter frequency here and there, the 70 centimeter frequency must be constantly adjusted during a linear pass to keep the radio on the correct frequency. If left unchecked, the signal will completely drift out of the receiver's passband and be unintelligible. Okay, so as you were listening to that XW2F pass, I was transmitting on 70 centimeters and I was receiving it through the satellite's downlink on two meters. And you could hear that as I was talking, if I didn't adjust the VFO of my 70 centimeter transmit rig, you would hear the pitch of my voice would increase and that's the Doppler effect in action. You need to constantly adjust your 70 centimeter frequency to keep it zero beat with the uh, satellite's downlink on two meters otherwise your frequent your transmit frequency will will drift away because you're not properly compensating for doppler and it will simply tune out of your receiver's passband so you always need to make sure on an on a linear satellite pass you always need to adjust your 70 centimeter frequency to make sure it is zero beat with the two meter frequency that goes for whether you're transmitting on 70 centimeters or receiving on 70 centimeters you always need to adjust your 70 centimeter frequency in order to keep your transmit and receive frequencies in the satellite zero beat and on track well, this wraps up the theory portion of getting on the linear satellites. In the next video, I'll walk you through a complete linear satellite pass using this station and demonstrate the theories that I touched on today. Be sure to subscribe to the DX Engineering channel so you don't miss any of their great video content. And be sure to contact me via email or Twitter if I can help answer a question. Thanks for watching. 73.